Hello and welcome back to the Joyful Soul Creates. Today I'm going to be sharing an underwater theme card I made and this is my DT project for the reminder for the latest Cupcake Inspirations challenge. The challenge is currently halfway through and the theme is under the sea which is perfect for this card. So this card involves a lot of masking. It's a one layer scene so I started by laying out all my stamps how I wanted them and these are all lawn fawn stamps and then I'm going to stamp from the front backwards so you want to stamp everything that's in front first and then mask them off before you stamp the things that are behind. I'm using MFT Black Licorice Hybrid ink for all my stamping because it's alcohol marker friendly and I'm going to be colouring them in with alcohol markers. It's also waterproof. The solid seaweed I stamped with evergreen alter new dye ink because I wanted a nice dark green and that was the best ink I had for that. Between each layer of stamping I am masking off all my elements. The yellow masks are with post-it notes and those are masks I'd previously made and have stored in the back of my stamp pockets and then for everything else I just used scrap paper to which I added a repositional adhesive, one that dries repositionable. So once I had all the main elements stamped and masked I went in and added some background elements so I have some bubbles and fish which I'm adding and these are also small that I don't mask these ones off. The stamp sets I have used for this are all, as I said, lawn fawn. I have the Mermaid For You stamp set, the Ahoy Matey stamp set, and Lovable Legends, as well as So Jelly. And there will be links to all of these in the description box down below if you would like to find them. I wanted the School of Fish to be a bit bigger, so I did go in and add a couple more stampings of the large fish cluster and I also added some of the individual fish just to make that school of fish bigger. Next I'm creating my scene masks so I'm going to be I need to mask off the sand area whilst I blend the sea and also sand banks within the sand area. Wouldn't have to do this I just felt it adds a bit more depth and realism to the scene. My camera wasn't recording the first part of the ink blending but basically I masked off the bottom portion of my scene where the sand's going to be and then I'm using distress oxides to ink blend over the C portion of the card base and remember all the large elements here are masked off. I'm using Mermaid Lagoon for two thirds to three quarters of the area and then just along the very top I'm using cracked pistachio distress oxides and I'm just working backwards and forwards until I'm happy with how those are blended. Then I switched my mask so that the C is masked off and I'm going to blend the sand. I only have a very limited colour palette of distress oxides at the moment or even distress inks so I'm going with squeezed lemonade because that's the closest to a sandy colour that I have. So I'm going over the whole area with the squeezed lemonade to start with. I will then lay in my smaller sandbank mask and go back over with the squeezed lemonade which will darken the backmost portion of the sand so the frontmost portion will be palest and I'm particularly concentrating on the line at the edge here to give some shadow where the sandbank would be. So I'll just go over that with my Distress Oxide until I'm happy with it. And then I will put in the second sandbank mask which goes slightly higher up so it's creating a further back sandbank. And as I did have a bit of difficulty getting enough differentiation between the areas of the sand, I did bring in my Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink, just a regular Distress Ink, not an Oxide and use that just to add a little bit of depth and deeper colour to the area. You do want to be careful if you're using distress inks and distress oxides together because you don't want to contaminate the ink pads one to the other, but if you're careful it should be fine. I then also went over the whole area of sand very lightly with the spiced marmalade just to knock back the brightness a bit. So then I'm going to remove all my masks and I will keep all of these so I'm slipping them each into the back of the stamp pockets that they match with. So the coins and the treasure chest pieces go into the Ohoi Matey one, the mermaid will go into Mermaid For You and so on. And as you remove the masks you will see the scene really coming to life. 
I probably should have left the masks on until after I'd added my splatter. I do go in off camera and add some splatter just to the water area. So I covered up the sand area so that that wouldn't get splatter on it. But I probably should have done that before taking the masks off. I did realize that when I went to do it, but I'd already taken all of the masks off and I felt it would take too long to put them all back on. So I didn't didn't bother putting them back on. It didn't cause too much of a problem, though one piece did cause my a bit of my seaweed to lighten up a lot because it got a big splatter on it. So I ended up a bit later, as you'll see, going in and colouring over just to darken that portion back up. So after removing all the masks, I'm going to start colouring my scene and I am using Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. I have the caps all on screen so you can see what colours I am using. I mostly use the brush tips for my colouring, but I will sometimes use the bullet tips. It depends how big the area I'm trying to get into is I start by colouring the rock and I'm using a variety of greys for this. I went with my lightest grey all over to start with and then I'm going in with green greys in the shadow areas. I felt the green greys gave a kind of look of there being algae on the rock which I thought worked well and then I will go back in with my lightest colour all over just to blend it out. I used my go-to yellow combination, a slight variation on it I think, to colour in the coins and I'm going through and doing all the coins at once and here I'm doing as I normally do for my colouring, laying in the darkest colour first and then I will work my way down to the lightest colour and I tend to work with three three shades when I'm doing alcohol marker colouring so I will have a darker mid-tone and a light. Sometimes especially if it's a big area I will use more shades and generally for skin and hair I use more than three but for the most part I stick with three colours. I'm using the same yellow combination to colour the bands on the treasure chest. And the treasure chest was actually my starting point for this card. I just had this image of a treasure chest sunk at the bottom of the sea, so that's what I was doing. That's where I started. I'm going to use some reddish browns to colour the treasure chest. I was kind of imagining that it's mahogany. And the portion on the inside of the lid, of course, will be quite dark because it's um, enclosed. And then that top edge of the chest kind of has a curve to it, so it will have a highlight along the centre portion. So I'm leaving my lightest area there just to give that highlight. And I use the same brown combination to colour the lower portion of the chest. Here's where I go in and colour up the bit of the seaweed that had lost some of its colour. Just with a very dark green, I checked my swatch sheet to see what colour would best match it so that it wouldn't look too odd to have that colour added in. Then I'm going to colour my mermaid and I'm giving her a very pale skin tone here. I try to vary my skin tones, but this is one of my kind of go-to paler skin tone combinations. Actually, normally I think I would use five shades for skin tone, and here I believe I only used four, but that's partly because she's quite a small image, so I didn't think it needed all that colour. The little seashell at the front of the card, I am colouring with some kind of tan shades. Then I am going to colour the jellyfish. I wanted the jellyfish to be quite subtle and almost like translucent looking. So I'm using some colours that are fairly similar to the sea behind him. So some kind of light bluey green tones. And I use the same colours for the legs as I have used for the body. I just changed the position of the shadowing slightly because the legs would be darkest at the top where they meet the body. I decided to go much brighter for the seahorse and I'm using similar colour tones to those I had used for the treasure chest. I'm trying to avoid bringing in too many colours so I thought the yellow would work well for the seahorse. Then I used some very light purple for the back portion of the seahorse. For the other fish I'm going to use some various kind of blue shades as I didn't mask the fish off because it would have taken forever to cut out all those little masks. I need to use colours that will work well over the distress oxides and not become muddy. Although that could be an interesting look too if you wanted to go that way. Having the ink over them and then adding the colour on top, that kind of dulled back colour, I think helps the fish look as if they're further in the background, which I think works very nicely. It adds some more depth to the scene. 
So I'm kind of colouring them in randomly, trying to have a variation between the fish so they're not all the same colours, but also that there's not a pattern to the way they're positioned because they're unlikely to have arranged themselves by colour. Then I'm going to colour in the mermaid's hair and I decided to go for ginger hair. I don't think I've used this combination for hair before, but I thought I would give it a go. I am not an expert at hair and I will admit I struggle with it a bit, especially lately I feel like I've gone backwards with my hair colouring and it's looking too linear I guess, not natural enough, so I think I need to practice at that a bit more. But basically I go in with flicks, I try to follow the shape of the hair as it is drawn and bring the shadows out towards the lightest area. I decided to darken up the back portion of the seahorse because the purple I juice there was a bit too light I felt and then I'm bringing in some more purples to colour the tail and the top of the mermaid and I went from lightest to darkest here which I don't normally most of the time I work from darkest to lightest when I'm colouring and my darkest colour here is very dark so I did have a little bit of trouble blending it back out with my light colours and I just kept working it until I was happy with it. Um, when I went in with my lightest colour though I think I overworked it a bit because the purple ended up bleeding into her skin and got a little bit messy. I did go over it with my skin colours again to try and knock it back a bit but it still didn't look quite right. So next time I'll need to be a bit more careful there. And then I'm using the light purples again to colour her tiara. Then I went on to stamp my sentiment. I hadn't actually planned out where I'd place my sentiment so I fiddled around trying to work out what I wanted to use and I actually ended up bringing in a sentiment from a Simon Says stamp set because I felt that fit nicely in the open area towards the bottom left of the card. So that's what I decided to use. There are several nice ones that would have worked in the Mermaid View stamp set that I'd considered using but I felt they didn't fit the space as well as I would have liked. Then I'm going to adhere the panel to my card base so this is kind of a cheats way of doing a one layer card. The scene is all one layer but by adhering it to the card base then none of my colouring will show through and it just makes it a bit sturdier. So I used Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue to adhere the panel to the card base and that gave me some wiggle room to make sure that it was all in place correctly before I pressed it down. For an extra touch I decided to add some Nouveau Drops over all my bubbles and these are in Sea Breeze so they're a translucent blue colour which works very well for bubbles. Some of the areas of bubbles have two bubbles touching each other so for those I only put Nouveau drops on one of them to start with and then let it dry back before adding the other one. This way they wouldn't bleed into each other. I didn't add those until they had dried. And that completes my mermaid card. Thank you for watching this underwater scene card featuring stamps from Lawn Fawn with lots of masking, ink blending and colouring. If you'd like to come and join in with the cupcake inspirations under the sea challenge we would love to see you. There is a chance to win a gift certificate to Birch Press Designs so it's well worth coming and playing along. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below along with links to my blog post and all the products used. If you enjoyed this this video I hope you will press the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. There's also a notification bell down below which you can click to make sure you receive notification when I post new videos. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have any questions or anything you want to say. There are a couple more videos on screen that you may enjoy. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!